so on our order of service. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God now together across the miles yet joined. So let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So more people joining as we speak, Chris and Christine and Chris. We have a lot of Chris's, don't we? And Christine's. Um, every week, oh hello John and Una as well. Every week we um, think about what we've done in the week before and the things that we might wish we'd done differently. Um, so in the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. So we keep a moment of quiet while we call those things to mind. And together we say, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So hear the forgiveness of God. May the Father forgive you by the death of the Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. So, Every week we, we mostly only have the gospel um, reading because it's actually quite hard to listen uh, through Facebook. So we've kind of reduced that down uh, to keep the service a little shorter than it might be. This afternoon we're going to have all of the readings. Uh, but right now Phil's going to bring us the gospel reading for today. Thank you, Phil. The Gospel reading comes from Matthew chapter 13, starting at verse 1. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path. And the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. Morning, Rob and Jane. Um, as Phil leaves, I always give him the phone from in here so that if it rings, it's not too distracting. This um, gospel reading reminds me of when I took my Bishop's Chorister Award because we had to learn 
four different parables so that they could ask us questions about our knowledge of the Bible. So it's not just about singing, but also but about worshipping in church. Um, and this was the one I was asked about. Um, so it always makes me think of that. So today I said to you that our words are from Avril, Avril Cole. Many of you will know Avril. Um, she has been in um, Wales, in Pembrokeshire for quite a while, um, but she is now back in Badgeworth. So she's, um, she sent us some words from Wales, actually, but welcome back, Avril. So I'm going to read the words and then I'm going to talk about the gospel reading in the light of her words. So these are Avril's words. When I was at work in the computer centre in Barnwood, I was sometimes asked to pray to God for people. I think they thought that I'd got a direct line to God, which they hadn't. I was also teased for my faith. I would like to tell you a story. One of our security men, who had come from London with his wife and two teenagers, decided to take his family back to London to visit friends and family. Whilst they were there, his 16-year-old son was killed by glue sniffers, a craze at the time. When the father came back to work, I went to talk to him when we were working near to each other in the bay. I told him how very sorry I was and that I could empathise with him as my young son had died some years ago. He knew that I was a Christian and went to church. Some time later, he came quietly to me and asked me which church I went to. As a consequence, he and his family came to church and his 18-year-old daughter joined the prayer group held in my home. So thank you, Avril, for your words. And you do need to know people, it's quite scary doing this. So whoever has prepared these words and written them has A, put themselves in an uncomfortable position thinking about their witness and then B, been brave enough to share it with you. So um, do give them some feedback. And if you're able to do it yourself, we would be very pleased indeed. So the gospel today talks about sowing the seed of God's word. And nowadays it's easy for us in this country to hear the word of God. The Bible is available without difficulty in many bookshops, in many languages, and we can even search it online as well. But the parable asks us to think about how we receive the word. Which sort of ground are you? Where is God's word active in your life? Where are you fruitful? We talk about our front lines, the places where we meet people every day. And to be confident and effective disciples, we need to show fruitfulness on that front line. I wonder, has the word of God flourished and grown into something strong and healthy in you, like the seed that was sown on fertile soil? Or is it rootless, perishing and withering when difficult times come along, like the seed sown on rocky ground? If I'm honest, I think we're all a bit of a mixture. Sometimes we might feel confident in our faith and at other times a little shaky. Avril took the opportunity to talk to the man whose son had died, when many people were probably avoiding him unsure of what to say. Those of you who've lost someone will know that, will recognise that thing, that phenomenon. Out of that encounter, he and his family started to come to church. They had the chance to hear the word of God and spend some time reflecting on it. The great news is that no matter what sort of ground you are, no matter where the seed, the word of God, might have first fallen or most recently fallen if it didn't root and take flourish and flourish if it didn't take root and flourish we get another chance and another and another to make our ground and our hearts ready to hear the word this is because god is generous god is extravagant avril's story shows us that our actions speak louder than our words in building a relationship with someone in their time of distress she was later able to share her faith. Do your actions speak louder than your words? 
Do your actions match up to the Christian faith you profess? If they don't, then you have another and another and another chance to get that right, to hear the word of God in your heart, a well-prepared ground where it will grow and flourish and bear fruit. You will become a confident disciple of God, able to share your faith and further God's kingdom, because God is generous and we should be too. So let anyone with ears listen. So I'm going to pray for Avril now. Dear Lord, we give thanks for Avril and her discipleship. We thank you for her confidence in sharing her story with us today, for her forbearance when she was teased for her faith, and for the good news in her story. We remember the two young men who died and give thanks for the life of faithful witness of both of their families, both Avril's and her co-workers. We ask you to bless Avril as she continues her journey as a disciple of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I really hope that each week you're hearing something different about somebody else's life of witness and that it's having an impact on you and your life of witness. Uh, so we come to our song, our hymn. We've got two hymns today. The first one we're going to sing is Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Anthem, which is, um, it's quite rousing and tells us the whole story, but is very much praise. So I thought that would be good today. I'm just going to give myself a note to start so that I'm not too low. It's actually lower than my pitch pipe goes, so I may actually go lower. Okay. So come ye faithful, raise the anthem. Number 131. Come ye faithful, raise the anthem. Cleave the skies with shouts of praise. Sing to him who found the ransom, ancient of eternal days. God of God, the Word incarnate, whom the heaven of heaven obeys. Ere he raised the lofty mountains, formed the seas, or built the sky, love eternal, free and boundless, moved the Lord of life to die. For ordained the prince of princes for the throne of Calvary. Therefore us and our redemption see him all his life blood pour. There he wins our full salvation, dies that we may die no more. Then our rising lives forever, reigning where he was before. High on yon celestial mountain stands his sapphire throne all bright, midst unending alleluias, bursting from the saints in light. Zion's people tell his praises, victor after hard-won fight. Bring your harps and bring your incense, sweep the strings and pour the lay. Let the earth proclaim his wonders, king of that celestial day. He the Lamb once slain is worthy, who was dead and lives for aye. Lord and honour to the Father, Lord and honour to the Son, Lord and honour to the Spirit, ever three and ever one. Consubstantial, co-eternal, while unending ages run. 
That's really quite a rousing hymn. I wonder if it's changed my heart rate. Not really. <laughs> so if you're following the order of service, we now turn to our affirmation of faith. Every Sunday we, um, we repeat what we believe and sometimes we use different words and these are different to the ones that we might often use in church. It's always good to use different words because if we're hearing the word of God, sometimes different words help us to hear it afresh. So join with me as we affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we come to our time of intercessions. And as I said before, these have been prepare, prepared by Marjorie. I'm just going to add in a couple of um, other intercessions as well. Um, the response is, um, when I say, Lord, hear us, your response, if you would, is, Lord, graciously hear us. So it's, Lord, hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. So I'm going to start with the school prayer for Sheddington School. This is because this week is the last week of school, uh, not just for Sheddington, but for lots of people, lots of places. It's a strange way to end term. So I just want to, to hold those people, um, staff and pupils and families um, of all different places, um, all different educational places. And um, so I'm going to start with that prayer and then I'm going to use Marjorie's prayers um, that she's written for us today. So the school prayer for Sherdington. Let's pray. Dear Lord, bless our school for working together and playing together. May we learn to serve you and serve one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I've just spotted that um, Rob's put on a request for prayer. Please do put on your request for prayers. Um, I will read the comments and even if I don't get to read them out, everyone else will see them too, so they will be prayed. Just remember confidentiality when you do that. Thank you. And I will also be praying for those who have died, so if you want to type in any names of those two, um, just make sure I know which ones they are. So let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before you trusting in your promise through your Son, to hear us when we bring our cares and concerns before your throne of grace available to all. We remember the nations across your world who struggle with poverty, disease, fear and famine on a daily basis. Lift up the faint-hearted, give renewed hope and strength to all who support and work tirelessly to relieve suffering and open the eyes of all in authorities governments and positions of power that they may seek to serve and relieve those in their countries. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we ask your blessing on our Queen and our Prime Minister at this time of great uncertainty in our country's daily lives. And we thank you for your unfailing certainty shown on the cross and in the resurrection of Jesus. Endue with wisdom, compassion and a desire for fairness and equality, all in authority at national as well as local levels of government, councils and decision makers who affect our daily lives, that they may put aside ambition and seek the common good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you, Father God, for our parishes set in the splendour of your creation, where we can truly lift our eyes to the hills amidst glorious country settings. 
we give you thanks and ask for your blessing and protection for Susan, Phil and their family, for Rebecca, Catherine and Rob, wardens and all who provide and serve this benefice known and unknown on a daily basis. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious God, we bring those who are sick in body, mind or spirit, especially remembering. Rob's cousin, Di, who's going through cancer treatment. We continue to pray for Calvin. We pray for all those people who we know are going through treatment at the moment. We pray for those awaiting tests and awaiting results of tests. So have a moment of quiet while we remember those people on our hearts and minds today. Lord, give them patience and comfort in their suffering that they may know your presence and peace in their hearts. We remember a name in the quiet, those who have died and whose anniversary we will recall now. So we pray for the family of Sally, whose funeral is next Tuesday. And we remember Derek, whose anniversary of death was on Friday. We have a moment of quiet to recall and hold before God those who we miss and mourn and pray for those who miss and mourn others. Comfort and bless all who mourn their loved ones, in addition who have had to cope to with the present restrictions on top of their grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, as we begin this new week, lift up our hearts, open our ears and minds to follow Jesus in serving all we meet with joy and gladness in our daily lives, even when we struggle to make sense of this pandemic, but safe in the knowledge of your love for each one of us. Amen. So we join together all of those prayers uh, with the collect, which is on the weekly sheet, if you want to join in with me. You know that you don't have to. So the collect for today, the fifth Sunday after Trinity, Sunday the 12th of July. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And as in pretty much every service we have, we say the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we're going to say it in, I'm going to say it in the traditional form. Uh, you are welcome to say it in the modern form if you prefer. So let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. As I was praying that, I had an overwhelming sense of, of the, um, the fact that the word of God during the pandemic has been 
heard differently. Um, I have had a chance to hear it afresh and I know some other people have too. I think that's really interesting that that space and the change, whenever things are a little bit disrupted, we're kind of jolted out of our normal comfort, comfort zone. Um, I pray that that's happened to you in a good way, that I pray that things have changed, that your heart has changed and that maybe Maybe we are now a little bit more of that fertile ground where God's word will flourish and grow. So we're going to sing The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free. Now I know that some people really like this one, so that's that's always nice. Um, the Spirit Lives to Set Us Free, Walk in the Light. Um, if you know it or you've got the words and you'd like to, then please do join in. I shall be imagining you. Um, and if you want to, you can march around to this one. So if you've got little people with you or even older people, it's very good to get up and get moving. Um, so why not? I won't because you won't be able to see me if I move too much. <laughs> and also you won't hear me so well. So the spirit lives to set us free in our gold hymn book. It's number 666 um, and it's on the weekly sheet. So hopefully you've found it. The Spirit lives to set us free. Walk, walk in the light. He binds us all in unity. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. Jesus promised life to all. Walk, walk. In the light, the dead were wakened by his call. Walk, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of the Lord. He died in pain on Calvary. Walk, walk in the light to save the lost like you and me. Walk, walk in the light 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 of the lord we know his death was not the end walk walk in the light he gave his spirit to be our friend walk walk in the light Walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light of the Lord. By Jesus' love our wounds are healed. Walk, walk in the light, the Father's kindness is revealed. Walk, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light. Walk in the light, walk in the light of the Lord. The Spirit lives in you and me. Walk, walk in the light, his light will shine for all to see. Walk, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light of the Lord. Walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the light of the Lord. That's really very easy to sing, which is pleasing. The other one was much harder. So we come towards the end of our service. I do have some notices to give. If you're able to stay for that, that would be fantastic. Um, things that you might find interesting and useful and I'd love you to share those with other people. On our order of service, faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
and it's not on the service, but I always give a blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>